Good evening, Mount Zion. Good evening. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Mount Zion, we want to welcome you to another Wednesday night worship. All of you, wherever you are watching us from, we welcome you to the Mount Zion Church, 2938 East 13th Street in the great city of Austin, Texas. On behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. G.V. Clark, we invite you to come and to worship with us. So wherever you are in your living room, in your home, on your job, you ought to get up on your feet and worship with us on this night. Come on, y'all. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
Oh, come on and lift up the name of the Lord in this place. You ought to be glad that you are still here, for God has been good unto us. Again, we want to welcome you to the Mount Zion Church. We thank you for joining us on this Wednesday night for worship. We are so grateful that you have joined us. And right now, our scripture reading on this night comes from Psalm number 100. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. And the psalmist says, this is why you ought to do it. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. That's Psalm number 100 in its entirety. And it is on tonight. We want to invite you at this moment to join us in a moment of prayer. We want to remember all of our names on the prayer list. We continue to lift up all of our health care workers, our first responders, all of them who are on the front lines as we continue to go through this coronavirus. We pray for all who are sick and shut in. We pray for all churches that are opened in the name of our God. We pray for the Mount Zion Church. We pray for our pastor. We pray for pastors all over this land and country. And we want you to know that we are praying for you right now. Those of you who are watching with us, who are sharing with us, we lift up your name unto a God who never fails. If you will, bow with us in this moment. Most gracious God, our Father, we thank you we come to you tonight to say thank you for just another day's journey. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, that you've given us one more time, one more chance to come into this place, your house of worship. In the midst of all that is taking place, you've still been good to us. You've given us our health and our strength. You've allowed us to be in our right minds. You've given us the opportunity to come into this your house of worship and lift up your name. And so God, right now we lift up all of those that are out serving and giving their life and sacrificing to care for others. We pray for those who are standing on the front lines to care for those who are sick, those who are in hospitals. God, we pray for leadership all over this land and country that you would give them wisdom and guidance that only comes from you. God, we pray for the general public that you would give us wisdom that comes from you on how to interact with one another and to abide by those things that have been given to us for our safety and protection. And then God, we have to, we come to this moment and we want to say thank you for our pastor. We thank you for Reverend Dr. G.V. Clark and for all that he does for not just Mount Zion, but for this community. We ask that you continue to bless and keep him. And then God, we want to say thank you for all pastors and preachers who continue to proclaim your word. And then God, right now, we know that it's Wednesday night, but we have to say thank you that we just celebrated the resurrection of your son on Easter Sunday. And so God, we're still Still grateful we're still thankful that he got up on that third day morning and we know that with all power in heaven and earth in his hands that we have access to that power so we thank you for resurrection power be with us and keep us as we go through this worship service on tonight that you would receive the glory from it all lord we love you we thank you we praise you it's in the name of your son jesus we do pray amen amen mount zion while we are standing we want to remind you again to continue to support your local church through your gifts. Remember that you can give to the Mount Zion Church through Zelle. You can do it through PayPal. You can continue to mail your gifts to the church. You can bring them by during the morning hours, during the week. But we just want to say God bless you and thank you for your gifts and for continuing to bring meat into the storehouse of the Lord that we might provide services to our community, even during this challenging time. Mount Zion, we want to remind you that Bible study will begin on Monday night. Pastor Clark will begin teachers meeting in Bible study at 6.30 through Zoom. Make sure you check your emails and your information for that sign-in data. You also have noon Bible study on Wednesday, and there's also Bible study on Thursday night. So be sure to check your email, check the website for information on how you can join us throughout the week. We are so excited that you're with us on this Wednesday night. And so right now we're going to ask you to go on and stand up on your feet again, put clapping in your hands, and join the praise team as we continue in worship on tonight.
all you ought to come on and shout in your living room that God will not give us more than we can bear. We are so grateful to God. We are so grateful that he is able to give us no more than we can bear. Thank you so much to the praise team for leading us in that moment of worship. Make you want to just be happy all by yourself. It don't matter who's around you or who's with you because God has been just that good unto us. What a blessed privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord on tonight. Again, we want to welcome you, Mount Zion family, any visitors and friends who have joined us on tonight. On Wednesday night, we are in a moment where we are studying and preaching from the book of Genesis. And so it is on tonight. I want to continue in that theme, and I want to invite you to the 45th chapter of the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 45. And I'll begin reading for your hearing on tonight at verse number 3. Genesis chapter 45, beginning with verse number 3. And I'll be reading from the King James Version on tonight. And it reads in this fashion. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you, to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Verse number eight. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Thus ends the reading of the word on this morning. We're grateful for this opportunity to stand. And for just this short moment, I want to present for your consideration the sermon title, The Purpose in My Placement. The Purpose in My Placement. From the time that we are children, people are always asking us, what do you want to be when you grow up? From the time that we are in elementary school, as we further our education, people continue to ask us, who do we desire or strive to become? In other words, people are asking us, do you know your purpose? I've come to understand that even As an adult, many of us continue to buy books and read articles trying to determine what our purpose should be. And I've come to tell you right now that your purpose has already been planned by God. I was curious about purpose, and so I looked it up in the dictionary, and the dictionary says that purpose is the reason for which something or someone is created or exists. And I want you to understand that whether you recognize it or not, God already has your purpose in mind. There are many of us, I believe, that because we try to find our life purpose, that we are missing our purpose for the moment. And I want to suggest to you right now as you're listening to my voice that if your mind is a little foggy, if you're a little concerned about what your life purpose is, maybe you ought to figure out what the purpose is for your life right now at this moment. Maybe because we're looking too far ahead, you're missing the purpose and where God placed you at this moment. You need to know that wherever you are, God has purpose for you right now in that place. 
In the text that I've read for you, we find Joseph. You know the story of Joseph, the young man who was given the coat of many colors. He was the youngest child at the time, and his father gave him the coat because he was his favorite son. The other brothers became jealous, and so they sold him into slavery. And after a long journey through ups and downs, we find Joseph is now the right-hand man in Egypt. He is sitting right next to Pharaoh. Some might say that he's the man sitting next to the man. He is the one making decisions. He is the one giving rulership right there next to Pharaoh. And at this point in chapter 45, Joseph's brothers have come to Egypt because there is a famine that is happening all over the land. They've come to Egypt to try to find food. And what's amazing about it is that they thought that their brother was dead. But here it is. They are now sitting in the very presence of Joseph and don't know that it's him. And Joseph, as chapter 45 begins, tells us that he is so overwhelmed with emotion that he finally got the chance to see his youngest brother, Benjamin, that he is overwhelmed with emotion that he begins to hug them and cry over them. But now comes the time for him to introduce himself to his brothers. And it is because he's introducing himself that I want to offer for you tonight just a short sermon that talks to us about that there's purpose in your placement. Look at what happens right here in the text. The first thing that I need you to understand about purpose in your placement is that you must recognize that everybody won't understand your purpose. Here it is right here in the text. Look at what happens in verse number three. The text says in verse three, and Joseph said unto his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? And the text says that they could not answer him because they were so troubled. They could not answer his question because they were troubled at his presence. Here it is right now in the text that Joseph has been standing before them dressed in all of his royalty and his brothers could not tell who his who he was until he told them I am Joseph your brother. I, I'm not surprised that they could not tell who Joseph was because by this time it had been over 20 years since they had seen Joseph and it's amazing that when God has your destiny planned out how you look different now than you did the last time some folks saw you. It's amazing how Joseph probably spoke different. I'm sure his dialect and he was able to articulate words different. Joseph was dressed different. He was wearing the royal regalia of those who were in leadership in Egypt. I would imagine that Joseph was eating different things, that he looked a lot more different and mature than he did when his brothers last saw him. And can I pause long enough to tell somebody that other folks may not understand that there's purpose in your placement because you don't look like what you've been through. I I, I know that that's something we like to say as a cliche in the church, but I need to tell you that folks don't understand, folks won't recognize you because God has been keeping you through all you've been through. Here it is in the text that Joseph doesn't look like the little boy that was placed in a pit. Joseph doesn't look like the little boy who got ran out of Potiphar's house. Joseph doesn't look like the young man that spent time in prison, but yet he looks like royalty sitting in the house of Pharaoh. Here is Joseph sitting on the throne making big decisions for all persons in Egypt, but his own siblings don't recognize him. Can I encourage somebody real quick that it's all right if you run across folks that used to to know you back then, but now that you're in God's purpose, it's all right if they don't recognize you. It's all right if the folks that used to mistreat you don't understand why you're sitting where you're sitting because God has done some things in your life that change your appearance. It's all right if family members don't think that you're the one they used to grow up with because God has purpose for you and he has begun to change who you are. Here it is in the text that Joseph among his very own siblings, he's been eating with them, he's been sharing with them, but yet they did not understand who he was. But can I tell you something that makes this interesting is that the reason they were afraid is because they knew how they treated him before. I need to pause long enough to tell somebody, you don't have to go back and get people for what they've done for you. Just let God handle it. I've come to understand that folks that mistreat me, God can do more to them than I ever could in wasting my trying, trying to scheme on folks. I just let God handle my lightweight. This is what happens in the text is that Joseph just kept on trusting God, but now his 
brothers who are standing in front of him who need his help. He looks different than he did the last time they saw him. And I need you to understand that there is purpose in where God has placed you. But first, you need to know that everybody's not going to understand it. The second thing that I want you to notice in the text is that as you look at the purpose in your placement, not only will other people not understand it, but you need to take time to testify that God did it. Look right here in the text, verses 4 and 5. It says that Joseph repeated himself unto his brothers and said, come a little bit closer. Come to me. I'm asking you because you need to know that I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, don't be grieved. Don't be angry with yourselves that you sold me there because God sent me before you in order to preserve life. The reason why Joseph could be who he is is because he had already been testifying that the reason he sits where he sits is because God did it. I've come to understand in my life that if you and I get distracted and begin to think that where we are is because of us, we're going to be messed up every time we think about where we are. Here it is in the text that Joseph is sitting in Pharaoh's pal palace. He is sitting there making decisions about the welfare of people. But Joseph had to take a moment to testify to his brothers that it wasn't because he was so good, that it wasn't because he was so committed, but he's sitting where he's sitting because God did it. Don't you understand that if you don't testify to God being the one who did it, you're always going to be messed up. Look at what he says. Don't be mad because of what you planned for me. But he says, God sent me. God sent me because he had a purpose for me. And what's amazing about the text is that if you don't understand God did it, you won't be able to handle it. The problem that some of us have is that we are too busy holding on to what folks did to us to embrace where God has us right now. God already has you sitting in a place of promise, but you're too busy holding on to the hurt that brought you there. I would imagine that Joseph would not be productive if he was still mad about being placed in the pit. I would imagine that Joseph would not be sitting on the throne where he is if he was still mad at Potiphar's wife for selling him out at the house. I would imagine that Joseph could not do what God was calling him to do if he was still mad at the folks in the prison when he was placed there. Joseph had to let go of what happened in the past and hold on to the promise that God had given to him. I'm just trying to help somebody to understand that God has purpose in where he's placed you and you can't take advantage of the purpose if you keep holding on to what uh, people did to you in the past. Notice that Joseph says it two times. You didn't do this, but God sent me. I, I, I want us to understand that not only can we not hold on to what other folks did to us on the journey, but if we start thinking that we did it, we'll get the big head and God might take away his provision. Here it is in the text that some of us get so carried away when we get a new title, when we get a new position, when we get a little bit of authority, when we get a few dimes in our pocket, when our bank account gets bigger than it's ever been. We begin to think that we've earned it or we deserve it, and we forget to testify that God did it. But I need to warn somebody that just as quickly as the money goes in, the money can come out. Just as easily as you were promoted, you could be demoted. Just as quickly as you were hired, you can be fired. And and Joseph shows us that in the midst of the moment, you need to testify that the reason I'm standing here is because God did it. Look at what he says in the text. He talks about the fact that you did what you wanted to do to me, but God sent me here. He says, you tried to get rid of me, but God used it to send me where I need to be right now. I don't know about the rest of you, but there are moments in my life where I felt neglected and abandoned. But I realize now when I look back over my life that all of it was just a part because God was sending me through it. I understand that I didn't know what was going on at the moment, but the reason I stand where I stand is because God did did it. Joseph reminds us that in the midst of his brothers not understanding, being confused, being afraid that he might try to get them back for what he's done, Joseph takes a praise break moment and testifies in front of his brothers that even though you meant it for evil, God always had it in mind that it was going to be for my good. I just hope right now that as you're running through the records of your mind and thinking about all the folks that mistreated you, don't hold it to their account. Know that God was just sending you somewhere. 
When you think about the folks that told you you weren't ever going to be anything, the folks that would never lend you anything, the folks that won't call you back, the folks that won't return your text messages, don't waste your time worrying about them. God is sending you somewhere. But the moment that you have to embrace is that when you realize that God has placed you somewhere special, you need to testify that God did it. Not only does Joseph testify of what God did, but in the last few verses, I want you to understand that the purpose in your placement, number one, understand that everybody won't get it. Number two, recognize that you have to testify that God did it. But the last thing I want you to know about in this text is that you have to trust what God is still doing. Look at what he says. Look at what Joseph says to his brothers. He says, God sent me before you so that I might preserve life. But then in verse number six, he says, the famine has been happening for two years and there's yet five more years coming where there'll be no planting nor harvesting. And so he says, God sent me before you so that I might preserve a posterity or he says, there's going to be a remnant And he says that God sent me here to preserve it and to save your life by a great deliverance. And he says, so look at me now. It was not you that sent me here, but God sent me. And not only did God send me, but look at where God placed me. He says, I'm sitting here as a father unto Pharaoh. I'm sitting here as a lord of all of his house, and I'm sitting here as a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. In other words, Joseph says, I'm grateful for what God has already done, but I trust God that there's still more for me to do where God has placed me. You need to understand that Joseph knew that his purpose was not yet complete because God put him in a strategic position to not just preserve life, but to make sure that a remnant survives. What I love about this is that Joseph had come to the understanding that his place sitting next to Pharaoh was not just for him, but it was for the preserving of other people. When Joseph talks about saving a remnant, Joseph remembers the word that God gave to Abraham is that there would be a remnant of your people who will return to worship at Mount Sinai. And Joseph understood that he was just falling in part of God's promise. Joseph understood that it was only year two out of a seven year famine and that God God still had people for him to feed, so he had to trust what God was still doing. Joseph said that I'm here not just for the remnant, but that I might provide a great deliverance for our people. Joseph had to trust that God still had purpose in where he placed him. And I'm just trying to tell somebody right now that wherever God has placed you, there's still purpose in what you're doing. I know you've done a good job. I know you've done a good work, but there's still purpose for you to do in your placement. One of the things you and I have to understand about God is that God is a visionary, that God looks beyond our temporal time and looks forward into eternity and already has plans in place. Will Mancini, in his book entitled God Dreams, he says that God is a visionary and he wants us to be a visionary with him. In other words, Joseph understood that what I'm going through ain't for me, but it's for all of those around me. Joseph understood that God placed me in this seat so that I might do good for those who are coming and for those who will be after me. Can you imagine the story that Joseph can tell that he grew up a poor kid, uh, the youngest of all of his siblings and all he had was a coat of many colors but now he's sitting there after being in a pit after being in part of his house after being in prison he says now look at me I'm sitting on the right hand of Pharaoh look at me I'm sitting here as the father of Pharaoh and in its original language father of Pharaoh means somebody who's not related but I'm sitting in leadership I think somebody missed that real quick Joseph is not sitting there because he inherited it Joseph is not sitting there because he was Pharaoh's nephew. He's sitting there because God placed him there. I wish I had two or three folks that know that they are sitting in a place that they don't deserve to be sitting in. They're sitting in a place that only God could place them so that they could have the authority to do what God would have them to do. And Joseph says, I'm your brother, but I'm the Lord of all of Egypt's house. I'm your brother, but I'm sitting here as the father of Pharaoh. I'm sitting here and I'm in control of all that happens in Egypt. And he says it's all because there's purpose in God's placement. I've come tonight just to share with somebody that there is purpose 
in the place where God has you. There is purpose for the reason why God has you in that job, why God has you in that house, why God has you everywhere that you are. There's purpose in that place. Mount Zion, there's purpose for us sitting at 2938 East 13th Street. There's a reason why we're sitting in Austin, Texas. There's a reason why we're here because God has purpose. And I need to let you know that I'm thankful that God has a history and a good record of doing good things when he places people where they need to be. I don't know about you, but I begin to look at a history and notice that God has a good record when it comes to placement. I begin to look through the Old Testament and realize that God placed Noah in a forest with plenty of trees because he knew the rain was coming and he needed to build an ark to save the nation. I'm reminded of the fact that God placed Moses in a wicker basket in the Nile River that he might be found by Pharaoh's daughter just so that he could turn around years later and come and free God's people. I'm reminded that God is good at placement because he placed a young man named David at the feet of Goliath with a, with a sling and five smooth stones so that he might come conquer the Philistines and free the Israelite people. I'm reminded that God is good with placement because six months before Jesus was born, he allowed John the Baptist to come forth so that he might cry in the wilderness that there's one who's coming after me, but he is greater than me. Can I tell you that God is good with placement? Because I remember that Simon of Cyrene, who was placed on the side of the road as Jesus was carrying an old rugged cross up Golgotha's hill, that he didn't know it, but God used him to fulfill prophecy and help Jesus to get his cross up Golgotha's hill. But I got to tell you that Jesus is excellent at placing folks. Because the Bible says that when Jesus was ready to give his life, that God placed him on an old rugged cross at Calvary. But God didn't just place him anywhere, but God placed him in the center between two thieves. Somebody's asking the question, why did God put him in the center and why not on the left or the right? It's because he wanted Jesus to be the center of attention. He wanted Jesus to be the focal point on Calvary. And I'm here to tell you that God does a good job of placing folks in his kingdom kingdom. But I got to let you know that Jesus knew that there was purpose in his placement. Jesus knew that the reason he came through 40 and two generations was because God is good at placing folks. The reason he was born in Bethlehem and walked the streets of Galilee is because he was good at placing folks. But I have to tell you that Jesus had the same issues that you and I have, and that is that everybody don't understand your purpose. The Bible says that even when he was a child, Jesus understood understood like Will Smith and the Fresh Prince that parents just don't understand that he stayed at the temple doing his father's business because everybody don't understand it. Jesus knew that he had to testify that God did it. That's why when he was in the synagogue, he said, it's not me, but he that sent me, that I'm doing the will of him that placed me in the flesh. You need to understand that God is good at placement because he trusted what God was going to do. You need to know that while he hung on Calvary's cross, Jesus had faith that God would fulfill his requirement. That's why as he hung, bled, and died with thorns on his head, as he hung, bled, and died with a thief on the right and the left, as as he hung, bled, and died, Jesus knew he could trust what God was doing, and that's why he said, it is finished, and into your hands I commit my spirit. Can't you see Jesus dying on the cross knowing that he had to trust somebody? His disciples were gone. He couldn't trust them. He couldn't trust his other followers, but yet he gave his spirit into the hand of his fathers because he knew that he could trust his father. And I got to tell you that his father did a really good job because they took him off that cross on Friday and God held on to his spirit. He stayed in the grave all day Saturday and God held on to his spirit. But then early Sunday morning, the Bible says he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands and God raised him up from the dead with all power in heaven and earth. And the Bible shows us that Jesus trusted the father Father, to do all in the purpose for where he placed him. I've just come tonight to tell somebody that there's purpose in your placement, that where you are is not random, that where you are is not by happenstance, but God has a purpose for you right where you are. And you need to know that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you're not fulfilling your full purpose because God gave his life so that you might find purpose through him. 
and that he might give you the power to do all that he has called you to do. And so right now, regardless of where you're listening, regardless of where you are joining us from, you need to know that God is calling you into your purpose because he has already strategically placed you where he needs you. But right now, he just wants you to come and join him in relationship. The praise team is going to provide a song, but I want you to know that right now is the time for you to give your life to Christ. If you're not a believer, if you're not saved, you need to know that God has purpose for your life. You need to know that God wants you to join him based on the sacrifice that Jesus made on Calvary's cross. Salvation is available unto you. And right there on your couch, right there in your living room, right there in your kitchen, you can accept Christ right now today. Believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Believe that he died. Believe that his blood covers our sins. And the Bible says that you shall be saved. You may be a believer but don't have a church home. I need to let you know that even though you can't physically come to the church, you can still connect with the church and come and be part of that church where you might grow and mature in your faith. So we invite you to do any of those right now. Accept Christ as your Savior. Join us. You can send us a message through our webpage. You can call and let us know that you have accepted Christ so that we might be joyful with you in this moment. But right now, as the song is rendered, we invite you to come. Won't you come right now unto the Lord? We're going to pray for you while they are singing that God would touch your heart and that you would receive him. God, our Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your purpose that you have within each of us. And we ask right now that all those who are listening, those who are watching, that they would come to the conclusion that they are not fulfilling their purpose unless they are in connection with you. We thank you for those who have just accepted you as their Savior. We pray for those who are still challenged and believing that you are the Son of God, that you would help them to hear your voice and harden not their hearts. God, we thank you for every believer and ask that you would help them to live into their purpose right where you've placed them. We thank you, God, for this time together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for those who have given their life to you that you would strengthen them and keep them and allow them to live in their purpose. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful that you have joined us on tonight. Again, Mount Zion, we want to remind you that as part of our worship, giving is a critical part of what we do in our worship. So we want to remind you and encourage you to continue to give to Mount Zion you can do it through Zelle. You can do it through PayPal. You can mail your gifts unto the church. You can bring them by during the morning hours throughout the week. But we want to thank you for continuing to bring your gifts and encourage you to continue to do so so that the ministry of Mount Zion can continue to go on. Even though we cannot gather together in the building, you need to know that ministry is still taking place within our community. Again, we want to pray for all that we are duty brown to pray for, those who are sick, those who... Um, uh, are alone in these moments. We pray for them. We pray for our leadership. We pray for our pastor. We pray for churches all over this land and country who are still celebrating the joy that comes only from God. So God bless you and thank you for joining us. After this song is done, we'll do our benedictory prayer together. Most gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for your grace and mercy. And we ask God right now that you would continue to bless those who are listening, those who are watching, those who are your servants in this world. Continue to keep us safe, protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, and allow your light to shine through us so that this world might know that we serve a risen Savior 
who still lives in this world today. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And the church sang together. Amen. God bless you.